This flight training tutorial will discuss airspace. Maintaining airspace rules and regulations is an important aspect of keeping the air safe. Different airspace classifications were developed to ensure the safety of all aircraft operating within their boundaries. And pilots must adhere to airspace rules and regulations to avoid collisions and other safety hazards. Controlled airspace is the generic term that covers the different classifications of airspace and dimensions which air traffic control services provided. Controlled airspaces range from Class A to Class E. Class A airspace is generally the air from 18,000 feet above sea level up to flight level 600 or 60,000 feet and anywhere over water within 12 nautical miles of the U.S. Unless otherwise authorized, all flights in Class A airspace are conducted under Instrument Flight Rules, or IFR. Class B airspace is generally located from the surface up to 10,000 feet above sea level, and it surrounds the nation's largest airports. Each Class B airspace is individually tailored based on the needs of the airport or airports in and around them. All Class B airspaces are made from surface and two or more airspace regions. As shown in the picture above, Class B airspace resembles an upside-down wedding cake. All pilots must have air traffic control's permission to operate in the area. Class C airspace is generally airspace from the surface to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation around an airport with an operating control tower are serviced by a radar approach control and have a certain number of IFR operations or passenger enplanements. These airspaces are also individually tailored, but generally are 5 nautical miles from the airport to 4,000 feet and a ring from 5 to 10 nautical miles that exists from 1,200 feet to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation. Every aircraft in the airspace must maintain two-way radio communication with air traffic control. Class D airspace usually extends from the surface to 2,000 feet above the airport. All aircraft within the airspace must maintain two-way radio communication with air traffic control. Class D airspace is tailored if instrument procedures are published. If the airspace is not A, B, C, or D, but it is still controlled, then it is Class E airspace. Class E airspace extends upward from either the surface or a designated altitude to the overlying or adjacent controlled airspace. When given a surface area, it is meant to contain all instrument procedures. Also in this airspace are federal airways, which begin from either 700 or 1,200 feet off the ground and are used to transition to and from terminal areas or en route environments. Unless noted, Class E airspace begins over the United States at 14,000 feet above sea level up to 18,000 feet. The next type of airspace is uncontrolled or Class G airspace. This is all airspace that is not A, B, C, D, or E. Air traffic control has no authority in this area, but pilots should remember that there are visual flight rule minimums that apply. Special use airspace is any airspace where certain activities must be confined or where limitations may be imposed on aircraft operations that are not part of these activities. These can include prohibited areas, restricted areas, warning areas, military operating areas, alert areas, and controlled firing areas. The picture on the left illustrates a prohibited area. These are areas where flight by aircraft is prohibited. These can be established for security or national welfare reasons. Some examples are Camp David or the National Mall in Washington, D.C. To the right is an example of a restricted area. These areas do not totally prohibit aircraft operation, but restrict aircraft when the area is in use. These areas often pose invisible hazards to pilots if in use. For example, guided missiles, artillery firing, or aerial gunnery. If the area is in use, ATC will make sure pilots avoid the area. But if not in use, aircraft are allowed to freely operate in the airspace. 
A warning area is airspace of defined dimensions extending from 12 nautical miles outward from the coast of the United States, containing activity that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. This area is not directly controlled by the FAA and is a warning to non-participating pilots of potential danger. The right top picture shows a military operating area. These areas are established for the purpose of separating certain military training activities from IFR traffic. During operations, non-participating IFR traffic may be cleared through a military operating area if IFR separation can be provided by air traffic control. Alert areas, pictured on the lower right, are designed to inform non-participating pilots of areas that may contain a high volume of pilot training or an unusual type of aerial activity. Controlled firing areas contain activities which, if not conducted in a controlled environment, could be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. These areas do not need to be charted because activities are suspended when aircraft are in the vicinity. Other airspace refers to the majority of the remaining airspace. These other airspaces include military training routes, temporary flight restrictions, parachute jump aircraft operations for frequent skydiving activity, published VFR routes, terminal radar service areas, and national security areas. Military training routes are routes established typically below 10,000 feet but above 1,500 feet above ground level and at speeds in excess of 250 knots. Temporary flight restrictions are temporary restrictions around areas to protect people and property from damage or make an area less congested for emergency aircraft. It is always a pilot's responsibility to make sure there are not TFRs in the area they are flying. Published VFR routes are VFR routes that transition under, around, or through complex airspace. Terminal radar service areas are areas that provide separation between all IFR operations and participating VFR aircraft. And lastly, national security areas are defined airspace that provides increased security and safety of ground facilities. The primary purpose of air traffic control is to prevent a collision between aircraft operating in the system and to organize and expedite the flow of traffic. Air traffic control may also be able to provide additional services when the workload permits. Pilots must be familiar with the operational requirements for each of the various types or classes of airspace. The above picture shows the different airspace classes, the requirements to enter each, the equipment required in each airspace, and the license required to enter, if any. We hope you learned a lot. Please help us spread the word about Pilot Training System and we look forward to further servicing your flight training needs.